Hey everybody, this is Eric. And today I wanna to share with you a couple of helpful extensions that will make the process of grading complex driveways and ramps a whole lot easier. So I love Sandbox native tools, first of all. So there's a lot you can do with what SketchUp comes right out of the box. But I will say that it does require a little bit more work. Sometimes you have to pre-think some things Sometimes you have to make sure that you know your edges or your contours are there, and then you can run the mesh on top of it. So what I want to do is today is to sort of, as much as I love math, I want to go ahead and skip that sort of thinking step and go straight to automation so that we can make our lives a little bit more efficient and a little bit easier. So let's get to it. So I've got my driveway here. This actually came from a someone on our community forum who had this problem and said, hey, how can I do this fairly easily? And I thought, oh, this will be a fun demo to share with others. So uh, let me just kind of tell you, it's a roundabout, sort of an entryway into maybe a residential complex. And you come down from the main road, down this driveway, and then turn the corner and go off into your neighborhood. So what we're looking at here is a couple things. Number one is there's a straight shot that comes down, and but then it turns the corner and then it and it goes around again. So the bottom of the slope is this line. The top of the slope is this line. So the question is, is how do we do that? Now, we can't really use the sandbox from contours because we don't have contours. I do know that I want to keep the slope at around or maybe less than 5%. So that's why I'm using this number four and a half feet or four foot five inches as sort of our top of slope. So that's what we want to do. We want to get from zero to about 53 inches and uh, Let's go ahead and do that. So really quick, if I didn't have, if I wasn't gonna do the extension, I would need to do, again, some math. I would want to come in and find out how long this first point is, this first stretch. And then I would need to find out how long this curve is and then this one, and I'll tell you why. Uh, so here's my calculator. I know that we're at 5% slope and over 50 feet. So we need to do a little bit of math here. I'm gonna take 50 feet times 12 inches, that's gives me 600 inches, and then take 0 0.05 times 600. So what that does is it gives me 30 inches. That's how high I need to come up at this point. So I would draw a line and type in 30, and then that would tell me what this slope is at 5%. So from here to here, if I was to just sort of draw that surface, you can see we have the first part of our slope. I know that's 5% because I did the math. I know how long this is. I know how high I am. But that's what I'm talking about. That's what I said in my intro is that if I don't want to do that much math or that much thinking, or if I'm not, if I accidentally make a mistake in my math, then I could have a problem. So let's automate it. I'm going to actually start by welding that back together. So I'm going to come over here and weld those edges together. And then I want to look for an extension it's under tools, not extensions. So under tools, this one is gonna be called Fredo Tools. And Fredo Tools is a suite of really kind of simple but powerful um, tools that you can use. And one of them that I wanna call attention to is what's called Curvature, which is helps for what we're doing right now, which is ramps. And so you don't, if you don't use all the other ones, that's okay. Curvature is the one we're looking for and Fredo Tools is free. I'll uh, put a link to it in the uh, comments below, in the description below. So I'm gonna hit Curvature, and then what it's gonna ask me is how high do you wanna to go to start? I'm gonna say 53 inches. Actually, the base height stays at zero. And it says, do you wanna reverse the curve? It depends on the direction of the curve. I'm gonna say no, um, and then click OK. And then in this case, I actually do need to reverse that curve. So it really just depends on the way the, the direction that the curve is, is going. So I'm gonna try that one more time. Tools, Fredo Tools, Curvature. In this case, I'm gonna say yes, reverse that curve direction. And there it is. So if I kind of tilt my view, you can see it's going from zero. It's coming around the curve, around the, uh, the bend, and all the way up to 53. And I didn't have to do any math, didn't care where the tangent points are there. I'm gonna do that again. Let's do that one more time. Tools, Fredo Tools, Curvature, and I'll leave the same numbers in there and click yes. Now what this does is it gives me it gives me everything I need to do to create a bounding box or the edges to run to create a mesh. Now I can use sandbox tools to do that, for example, from contours. But a couple of things. Number one, if I turn my hidden geometry on, 
You may or may not like you know, the way that the sandbox tool interpolates or triangulates the mesh. The other thing it does is it gives you more than you need. So you do have to go in and make sure that you've explored this and that you trim out that extra bit on both sides. So if that's OK, that's fine. Um, but if that's something that, for whatever reason, you're not interested in, let me show you a different way to do that. And I like to use this extension, this next extension, to fill these meshes in because it doesn't um, make you clean it out. So I'm going to go View, Tool Palettes. I'm going to come down. I'm going to find what's called Soap Bubble. Bit of a funny name. You've probably seen me use this one before. It's also called Soap Skin Bubble. So what I want to do is create what's called a skin. So I need the edges selected. They need to be continuous, so I can't have any gaps. And then I click Skin. And then what it's going to do is it's going to run um, a mesh across it. And this is a quad mesh, not a triangulated one. And depending on how much detail I want, I can enter more subdivisions or less. But if it's just kind of a straight, flat slope, I probably don't need that many. Um, so let's try something like 40 and hit Enter. And you can see what it does is it creates a quad mesh instead of that triangulated mesh. So depending on what you're working on, that might create a cleaner slope for you. And then the, the last step on this is that if you want to soften that and get rid of that sort of the quads, you can soften it. And then that's, that's done. So let me go ahead and paint that gray. So let's do this. Since I don't need, since this is symmetrical, I'm going to copy this and move this over. And I need this to be right, let's see here, about. OK, so with that copied, I now have, I can explode these. And now I want these inner lines here. So I can now copy that. I'm going to hold Shift, and I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to make sure that these stay welded, or else I'm going to have to re-weld them. And I'm going to grab those. But one thing I'm missing here is that if I grab this, if I grab this section, it's going to be kind of a jarring transition. So what I might want to do is actually come up to the center point here and then give that a height maybe like six inches or even a foot. And then just using the arc tool, I will do a little bit of manual work because I do want to make sure that I have this sort of inner edge exactly where I want it graded. And from there, instead of skinning it, I'm going to move this off to the side because I want to make sure that I got a clean boundary. Because sometimes, if you look close, you can find that if you have something, if you have an edge that isn't connected, like this one here, see that little edge there? I need to get rid of that. And then from there, I should be able to weld these together. Or I don't always have to weld them, but it's a nice way to check because if you click on one and they don't weld, that's kind of a sign that maybe there's something in there that needs to be closed. And then I'm just going to come in and I'm going to skin that again. I'm going to enter something like 40, get some nice, uh, get my nice quad mesh on there, hit enter. And what it can do is you can see how it just sits in place. So once that's smooth, just like I did with the first one, I'm going to move that right back into place. I just moved that, I worked off to the side because it just helped me just kind of make sure that everything was how I needed it. Of course, I, I don't need to do that normally. I could probably just work right in place, make that gray, and there we go. So let me grab my car over here. Maybe he's coming in. So I'm going to go 90 degrees, and I know that it's a 5% slope. So if I come over here and just make that 5 degrees, maybe not the same as 5%. So let me just go ahead and do that something like 4 degrees, and there we go. So you can see I've got a sloped, it's sloping in two directions, down and it turns the corner and then it meets the grade at the lower part of the roundabout. So that's a pretty cool way to do it. I think once I learned how to do that, I was like, yep, this is probably going to be the way that I do this for now on. So I'll leave it at that. Um, when we go into grading extensions, there's a lot of different directions we can go. And I have to be careful that I don't say, hey, let's look how this extension would do it. Now let's do it again with another extension. I mean, the goal is, is that first of all, you start with native tools like sandbox tools, and then we work our way up so that you can combine the two and sort of get the best of both worlds. So in this case, this extension, Curvishear by with within Fredo tools is a really great way to create that ramp profile 
And then whether you use sandbox tools or whether you use an extension to create that mesh and that plane that sits on top or sits within that boundary, that's kind of up to you. But really I wanted to make you aware of that method and then let you choose kind of how you wanna apply it. So again, I'm gonna put the link to those extensions, both of them, Fredo Tools and Soap Skin Bubble in the description below. I'm gonna leave you there. I'm gonna say thanks for watching as always, and I hope to see you next time.